we knew we had a good idea. We were just like, how do we get this out to people, obviously? So that's why early on we decided to go for Shark Tank yeah. right away. We're like, we think this will be a perfect Shark Tank product. Not only did we want to get on Shark Tank, but we wanted to get on the holiday episode, the Christmas episode, basically. And that was our goal from the very beginning. Now, we had no idea that we could, I mean, we believed that we could do it, but the timeline to set that up and everything to actually get product on the water, you know, coming from Asia over here to LA and then getting it actually out to customers in that time frame. Everybody told us we we're absolutely nuts. There's no way we could do it. They were talking, it's going to take at least a year to do that. Well, we said, screw that. We don't care. We just keep pressing. And like Brian said at the beginning, we we're from idea to in front of the sharks, standing in front of those five sharks in six months and getting a deal with Barbara Corcoran. And then it aired about two months later after that. And our goal always was once it airs, we knew sales are going to go up, not just up, but that's when we officially launched the website. Right. We did. We went in front of the sharks with no website, no sales, no history at all, no wow. clue really. And just wow. went in front of them and got a deal with Barbara with nothing, not one product. sold. we went in front of them with basically five prototypes that we gave to them, gave to the sharks as a gift. Okay. <laughs> got a deal. And two months later we launched on shark tank and that's when it really took off. And we absolutely knew that we had something, but, we weren't able to ship those first products. It was December 3rd of 2017 when we launched on Shark Tank. We weren't able to ship our first products to the actual customers until mid to late January of 2018. It's like a month and a half later. And all the customers knew when they were ordering off the website that there was a delay and they were still willing to buy the product. So we ended up being, uh, we didn't get caught up until May of 2018. People were waiting up to four to five months for this product. We knew we had it. And then we just had to get caught up and you know here we are four years later with still incredible sales getting the, the company out to the world making the world a happier place it's a bold move i mean and i love it i think most people to your point not so much you know product or perfection will impede your progress but this is like bold a hundred percent right this is we have no sales we just had this great idea let's go ahead and ship and we believe shark tank will understand that too and then to get them to air it i mean right and then even close the deal with barbara that's awesome. I mean, honestly, that's like, I've never heard that story. That's so, so good. So when you guys were negotiating your valuation, what on earth was that like? So you guys just wanted a deal, I can imagine, but walk us through a little bit of what that was like to get Barbara to commit. You know, 20%, you know, 50,000 for 20%. Like, yeah, it sounds good. Talk to the producers and all that. Like, yeah, it sounds about right. That's all really, it was. Really know it. That's really all it was. Yeah. We just wanted to make it fair. And we didn't, we didn't want to say, you know, 200,000 or something like that. And we're, the sharks would just be completely turned off. We wanted it to, okay, they just have to put a little bit in here and they're going to get a substantial part of the business. Barbara ended up with 30% for 50,000, but she took a flyer on us. We're now her uh, most successful Shark Tank company in her 12 years being being on Shark Tank. That's and we're amazing. number three total all time. Overall? Just in, four, just in four years, yeah. You know, that's really smart too. I mean, because in reality, they're getting a real slice of the pie, but at the same time, it's like proof is in the pudding for them too, right? It gives them the ability to really leverage oh, yeah. that network. And that's that symbiotic relationship is, it's honest, right? It's like, okay, we're giving you, you got to give it to us now. And we, we believe we have the product that'll flourish. That's that's amazing. It's a huge ego play for the sharks too. I mean, they, sure. they love talking about the ones that they saw that the other sharks didn't see. <laughs> and, you know, Michael and I think naturally have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder when it comes to Lori and Mr. Wonderful and Robert and Mark, all the ones who decided to pass on the company. Because if they had a second shot at it, you know, none of them would. And the exact, the, the lesson to be learned in that whole thing is that, the sharks are brilliant. It's a master class in business. Every time you listen to them and you watch a sh the shark tank, yeah. But they don't know everything. Right. Because if they knew everything, they all would have taken a flyer on the company and realized that this was a product for everyone. And that this stood to be one of the most successful products in shark tank history, but only Barbara, because she believed in us probably more than she did the company. She saw that, she took the chance on it, and now she gets to brag about it. So the sharks don't know everything. So out there, if you're in business and you got all these people telling you, hey, it's a bad idea, it'll never work, blah, blah, blah. If you believe it, hey, man, go for it, right? Because if the sharks aren't always right, the people who are consulting you, they might not be right either. Totally. I'm an investor in companies, and I'll tell you, like, when people ask me, what do I look for? I'm like, honestly, it wouldn't even make any sense. Like, I just believe that this person's going to run through a wall to solve the problem, whatever problem that they've decided. And like, if they show me a business plan, I might skim it, but I'm just really betting on them. And the thing is, I'm going to be right. And I'm more often going to be wrong, but that's how it goes. You know, you never know, but it's still fun. I mean, the journey's still amazing. And, it, and I think at a, in a bigger picture, it's just important to support entrepreneurs out there who, or people in general who are just trying, right? They're putting their livelihood on the line for 
a guess. And that's, <laughs> that's not always that easy. So once you guys closed the deal with Barbara, what was the first thing? Was it instant QVC? You know, what was the thing that she, she started to tee up for you guys? It's interesting because again, Michael and I have always just followed our own path and Barbara and the rest of the sharks told us on the set of Shark Tank. And then even after when we we're going through the due diligence and ultimately closing the deal with Barbara, that we didn't need to go to retail, that we didn't need to go to brick and mortar stores, that we needed to focus hundred percent on our direct to consumer on our website business. And Michael and I remember we were, we were in New York city visiting Barbara for the first time. And I remember we were in that hotel room, bro. And we we're still sharing hotel rooms back in the early days. And I remember saying, man, I'm a Costco power user. This product belongs in Costco. It's oh. the perfect Costco product, right? It's yeah. unique. It's affordable quality. It's for everyone. This needs to be in Costco. I don't care what they say about uh, the, the sharks or Barbara says about DTC, direct to consumer. We need to figure out a way to be in Costco. So we got a hold of Barbara's people. They connected us with someone who is a salesperson who uh, was ultimately able to get us into retail, get us into Costco, Bed Bath & Beyond, Kohl's, Target. And honestly, that is probably the thing, Michael, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but that's probably the most important decision that you and I made was to go into retail because had we not done that, there are so many knockoffs out there and there are so many people who are out to rip us off. It would have been someone else, one of those big as seen on TV brands who would have ripped us off they would have gotten the foothold in all of the retail channels and they would have become the brand. They would have been the company and we would have just been this cute little direct to consumer business saying, yeah, but we invented this whole thing, right. right? But they would have just completely run us over. So if we had followed the shark's advice, I truly believe that we wouldn't be out of business today, but we would not be nearly the company that we are today. And that's because we decided to, to go into retail, which was a, a scary and a, a dangerous decision to make, but I'm glad we made it.